А некоторые думают, что архитектура это вопрос стиля. But styles can also be very temporary. Но стили они тоже временные, они приходящие. Architecture needs tradition. Архитектуре нужна традиция. Tradition is full of ideas. Традиция полная идей. History is full of ideas. История полна идей. So I think architecture should not be about style, it should be principally about ideas. Поэтому архитектура, я считаю, она должна сводиться не к стилю, а к идеям. And only when it is about ideas, I think that architecture can become art. И только если речь идет об идеях, тогда архитектура становится искусством. Okay, so the boring bit is over. Now we can look at some pictures. Теперь скучная часть подошла к концу. Давайте посмотрим на фотографии. So this, the first project. Basically, I'm going to start the lecture by talking about two Italian architects. Я начну лекцию с рассказа о двух итальянских архитекторах. Who worked around the middle of the 20th century. Которые творили в середине 20 века. I'm talking about them because maybe they are not that known outside of Italy, so I thought it might be interesting. And also these projects, one is in the mountains, well, one architect worked in the mountains, another one worked by the sea. Я хочу поговорить об этих архитекторах, поскольку за пределами Италии они, возможно, не очень известны, и вы о них не слышали. Один из них творил в горах, другой на побережье. So we'll start with a project which is a um, house for an extreme skier. Now the story is that actually, as you can see, this photo still has some scaffolding on, still being built, the house. But the house was built in 2008. Дом был построен в 2008 году. But the project was done in 1954. Но проект датируется 1954 годом. The architect died in 1973. Сам архитектор умер в 1973. He never saw his project. Он так и никогда не увидел воплощение своего проекта. But a group of students and teachers at the University of Turin. Но группа преподавателей и студентов из Туринского университета decided to look at this project and they decided to build it and make it an example of green architecture. Решили воплотить этот проект в жизнь и они работали в рамках экологической экоархитектуры. So this is an example of how an idea can live longer than the architect, not just because the buildings sometimes last longer, but because the idea itself was taken back on board from 1954 to 2008. So this is the name of the architect. Now, now what I wanted to, what I was saying a little bit at the beginning is that art, or let's say that now I'm making, I'm doing a bit this exercise. I'm trying to use the word art rather than architecture. It's a little bit provocative, but let's see where we can go with it. Я намеренно использую слово искусство вместо слова архитектура, и это может быть немного so the artist does a lot of personal work and is also has his own personal preoccupations. So let's so let's let me tell you about some preoccupations that Carlo Molino had because I think they are present in his approach to art and architecture. So, Molina was obsessed with speed. He used to race cars. He used to pilot airplanes. 
He owned, in his life, I think he owned four tourism airplanes. He loved downhill skiing. So this is the, let's say, the, idea, the sketch idea of this project, which is the house for an extreme skier. You can see the skis here. And you can see also these obsessions about flying, as he was a pilot. The building seems to be lifted off the ground. Obviously it helps also with the snow, because at that height you can have 3-4 meters of snow. But the, the idea here, I think, was to, it's got a number of names, but let's say, for, to make the translation easier, to, let's call it the Triangle House. And from the idea there, it develops, it's got three, three different sections of, actually four different sections of, let's say, triangles, which is the roof structure. The idea starts to becoming a structural idea as well, so from art, engineering starts to come in. And then the building is um, is there, you can see it's got its um, solar panels, it's working, it got a lot of prizes for um, conservation of energy. And then, you know, Molina was, wasn't, was fortunately able to do some architecture. This is him in front of a house that he did for a, a private client. The, the ideas are a little bit the same, there's the idea of the building that almost takes flight. It's almost, it looks like it's lifting off a little bit. This, the fascination with flying is present in his architecture. And the structural ideas also are continued in, in respect to the tradition of Alpine um, buildings. So these buildings are, what I'm trying to say is these buildings are both modern, but they're very much in the tradition of Italian or even Swiss Alpine architecture, or even French. Even the interiors are both very traditional, but he designed the chairs, he designed the fireplace, the, he designed the light fittings. And this is the last example of his work, which is also this bridging between tradition and modernity, which is a station, skiing station, in the mountains. It's here it's broken up from an image of, of the idea of the project, roof, overlapping walls, wooden structure, stru structure logic, and base. I think the mod this this division between the, the wooden part and the and the white masonry part is very traditional in the Alps. But this part is not traditional. This this 
terrace made in this way that it's lifting off the ground is the, art, the artist's interest and in a way it's one of the things that brings it towards the field of art from the field of tradition. Now it's a, it's a restaurant and you can see some of the the, de the details, the shutters, the structural logic. And again, the, the terrace, it seems to be what takes it out from a more standard traditional approach. So moving, that's the mountain bit done, moving towards the sea, I think we, it's another basic one that says that there are many different ways of doing buildings and although they might have tradition, they're very per, per, personal ways of um, bringing one's own interest. So the second architect is called Joe Ponti. И здесь я продолжу говорить о том, что архитектура это все-таки что-то личное, и мы поговорим об архитектуре Джиопонти. His his personal obsession or his personal interest was in ceramics. А его интерес керамика. He was working for a famous ceramic company called Richard Chinori, for he was head of the artistic design of this company for three years, even before he became an architect. Он работал в достаточно известной компании, фирме производителей керамики в Италии, и он был художником в этой студии, в этой компании долгое время. In the, in this is a late project of his in the coast of Sor Sorrento near Naples in Italy, and the, the architecture itself is quite simple. It doesn't try to do too much. И вот архитектура в Неаполе, в Италии, дом на побережье, она достаточно проста. Он не усложняет многие вещи. But when you go in, there is something different going on. Но когда вы заходите внутрь, то все выглядит по-другому. And basically all these uh, different ceramic tiles, all these different furniture, everything has been designed by the architect who's following his own artistic direction. And again in the room, I think he designed 20 or 30 different type of tiles in the blue and yellow colored chrome for this project. Только для этого проекта, насколько я знаю, он около 20-30 видов плитки керамической спроектировал, создал рисунок. And you can see that there are some similarities with, with the Crimean coast. И вы видите, что есть некоторые сходства с Крымским побережьем. So when I first came to Crimea, I felt quite at home. Когда я первый раз приехал в Крым, я почувствовал себя как дома. So then I'll talk about some of, uh, of my work. First I'll talk about a, probably the smallest project that, that I've ever done. Which was a, a drinking fountain for the Royal Parks in London. Now, the, following one's own obsessions or interests, instead of, of just looking at drinking fountains, we st started this project looking at sundials. Sundials. И говоря о своих интересах, когда мы проектировали этот фонтан, мы в первую очередь подумали о солнечных часах. It could have been a suicidal decision. But in the end, it, the decision that made us win this competition. Against 164 projects. So 
So this was an example that we had nearby, but then we thought, well, let's really study the, the idea of the sundial. Let's try and find as many examples of the sundial that we can. And we basically started filling up a table with photos and photos and photos of, of sundials. И uh, когда мы работали над этим проектом, мы uh, решили воплотить идею солнечных часов, и мы нашли все варианты солнечных часов, какие могут быть, и у нас стол просто был завален чертежами рисунков. And the question is, why a sandal? Well, why a sandal? Because for a fountain in the park, the big difference is that it is in the elements, it's got the sky as a ceiling, it's got the trees as walls, so it's a different condition than an urban condition. So we thought the sun, relating to the bigger picture, to the to the to the sky, is was a more interesting dimension than just looking at um, looking down. Rather than looking down, we wanted to look up. почему пришла такая идея? Потому что парк это место, где видно деревья. Солнце, небо, и uh, мы хотели, чтобы люди обращали больше внимания на солнце, на небо, и uh, не смотрели всегда вниз, а смотрели иногда и вверх. And then we, we were more attracted by examples that dated from the times of Alexander the Great, or in Alexander Macedon. И еще со времен Александра Македонского мы интересовались проектами, вариантами солнечных часов. And of these projects, we identified one that was found, I think it was found in between Iran or Af in Afghanistan. It was found only in 1979, and it was this one here. It's got, in the middle, it's got the dial that will cast the shadow and the marks that will show the time. And we thought it was a very powerful image. And there's another tradition in the British Islands which is prehistoric constructions. You might all know Stonehenge, but there's a lot more and this is one of them. The granite stones standing up in the form of ceremonial religious sites. И на британских островах тоже есть интересные традиции. Вы, наверное, больше знакомы с Stonehenge, uh, но uh, вот есть еще в Британии такие гранитные uh, колонны, установленные uh, в ритуал, на, на ритуальной площадке. There's quite a lot of them, actually, if you think about it. Uh, на самом деле их в Британии очень много. Now this is instead an image from the Stanley Kubrick film 2001 Space Odyssey. So now you can start to get a little bit into my obsessions. What I like about it is that there is this very abstract piece pointing to the sun, the moon, the sky, and it was a little bit what we were thinking about in this fountain project. So we started to experiment with an ab abstract shape, a cube maybe, maybe a oblong, with the hole, with a, um, a ball, a sphere, and we went a little bit in this direction. We started from one sphere, where we decided to put three spheres. Because we were thinking about three conditions of drinking for adults, wheelchair, disabled users, and animals. Поскольку мы думали о том, что из этого фонтана могут пить три категории людей, вернее, три категории. Взрослые, люди с ограниченными возможностями, люди на колясках пониже и собаки. So we took a slice of this project 
Поэтому мы взяли этот проект в разрезе. And we explained to ourselves and to the parks this idea of the different possibilities and conditions of drinking. И мы объяснили себе и другим эти условия для чего создается этот фонтан для того. And this was the the finished piece a few years later. И вот оконченный проект несколько. It was all cut cut by um, um, computer um, cutting machine. It was gra the granite. The granite itself came, came from Cornwall and I can't remember the figure now how many millions or billions of years old it, it is, but it was quite an interesting concept that this piece of stone that has been there for such a long time suddenly is brought to a different place in England. И э, сам гранит, привезен из Корнвелла, э, это, этому камню миллионы лет, он очень древний, то есть он стоял там многие тысячелетия, и вот э, он обрел новый облик в парке. So you go near it, you press the button, this one you can fill the bottle, this one you can drink. И если нажать сбоку э, кнопку, то можно наполнить бутылку, здесь вот могут, можно просто пить. Then there is a hole from which... Water comes out. You press the button. Water comes out of a hole. То есть, если нажать на кнопку из отверстия, бьет. And your head goes inside. Your head goes in, inside another hole. И ваша голова. As you're drinking. Which creates a, an envelope, which creates a. То есть создается такой конверт, когда вы. And you can fit, you can fit a bottle. The idea, of, one of the ideas of this project, it was that there's so much plastic bottle wastage in parks that if you can go to the park without having to buy a bottle, you can bring your own. It's much better. И одна из идей, вдохновившая нас на создание этого фонтана, состоит в том, что сейчас очень много тратится пластика, пластиковых бутылок, тратится, выкидывается, выбрасывается это все в парке. Таким образом, мы решили сэкономить, да, и сэкономить на использовании пластиковых бутылок. This is the, in, in the context with the... The dog doing what it's supposed to do. And this is the dog doing what it's not supposed to do. Now, coming back to, to this idea about style and, and ideas. If we were to look at this structure in the city that I am from, which is Rome in Italy. You could say it's um, neoclassical. There's some, you know, there's some empty windows, there's some, there's some details of things that's standing up on the top, but overall you don't necessarily see the idea. But there is an idea here that is extremely famous in Rome. Maybe some of you have even seen it. There is a, a little hint here. There is some, almost like some signs of, of hands or of paint that has been worn off. And it's idea of looking through a hole. И идея подглядывания через отверстие. And seeing one of the more famous buildings in Rome, which is the Dome of Saint Peter, done by Michelangelo. Где можно увидеть собор святого Петра, выполненного архитектором Michelangelo. Which brings to maybe one of 
my interests and I guess many architects' interests, which is the idea of the view, the directed view, the controlled view. И здесь идея вида, прямого вида, вида из окон, вида. So when we were doing the fountain, we were also thinking, if there's going to be many of them, would it be interesting to position the whole in relationship to some views? И когда мы проектировали фонтан, я тоже думала о том, что если нам придется таких много ставить, то здесь идея вида через это отверстие будет тоже. Obviously, it's not a new idea. И эта идея не нова. And this is a prehistoric example of the same idea in England. I wouldn't be able to date it, but it, you know, predates most structures that still exist in Western Europe. Точно дату сооружения этого не скажу, но с точностью могу сказать, что это сооружение было. So there's nothing new in, in the ideas I'm talking to you about. They're all, they're all, they've all been done before. То есть в тех идеях, о которых я вам рассказываю, нет ничего нового. Все это совершалось раньше. So we propose to do something similar in London. И мы предложили сделать что-то наподобие. Okay, then moving back to, I think, this parallel that I was talking about, Italian architecture and Crimean architecture. There's a famous house in the island of Capri that was a writer built for himself. He had an architect help him, but in reality, he did most of the decisions on site. Ah, ему помогал архитектор, но по факту он большую часть своих идей воплотил. Without any, without any, as far as we know, there weren't any plans, there weren't any drawings, there weren't any sections. It was done on the spot. Every decision was made on the spot. Ah, то есть каждое решение принималось на месте. Не было заранее продуманных планов, чертежей, идей, все, все решения принимались им уже непосредственно на строительной площадке. From this angle, there are two main ideas that he had borrowed himself. He was sent to exile in an Italian island in which there was a church, and the church had some stairs that had this triangular shape. И Идеи, несколько идей, связанных с его жизнью, получили воплощение в этом проекте. Он был сослан, одновременно он был сослан на остров, на гору, и там была итальянская церковь. И вот в церкви были такие треугольные формы ступеней, лестницы. In the island is called Lipari, it's near Sicily. Это было недалеко от Сицилии, этот остров находился. And most... Buildings on the island, most traditional buildings, и большинство зданий, построенных в традиции того острова, had a flat roof. имели плоскую крышу, плоскую кровлю. He added this wing. He added this circular wing that does two things. It hides the chimney. И он добавил вот это крыло белое, которое, у которого есть две функции. Во-первых, оно прячет трубу. And gives you some privacy if you want to suntan here, so that you you are a bit covered by the views of people outside. И оно помогает вам уединиться, если вы хотите уединиться на крыше, то оно закрывает вас от глаз посторонних. Now, what I wanted to to when I started becoming interesting interested in this project, what I found were books written by architects on this project. Когда я заинтересовался этим проектом, я нашел книги архитекторов, посвященные этому зданию. It's also um, the star of a film by a French director called Jean-Luc Godard. This, this house. Этот дом также фигурировал в фильме известного французского режиссера. And then I started. I read all the books. I watched the films, but I wasn't satisfied. Я читал книги, смотрел фильмы, но все же остался недоволен. Чего-то, чего-то я там не находил. Because I think that to understand architecture, 
maybe art. You need to try and understand what is in the head of the person that is creating it. Поскольку, чтобы понять, в чем состоит искусство архитектуры, нужно понять, что происходит в голове художника, архитектора, создателя. In this case, it was a great opportunity because it so happened that the person who built the house was a writer. И в данном случае мне получилось это найти, обнаружить, поскольку создателем дома был писатель. So I started looking at all the books he wrote. Поэтому я стал читать его книги, его авторские. And I found that there was a book that he wrote. That at the, he wrote this book between 1940 and 1944. Я обнаружил книгу, которую он написал между 1940-м и 44-м. Which were the same years as he was building the house. Это как раз период строительства этого дома. I found it in Italian. And it, I found the book in Italian. Я нашел эту книгу на итальянском языке. But there wasn't an English version. Английской версии, к сожалению, не было. So I became a translator. Поэтому я стал переводчиком. And I think that I found in translating this book so such an overwhelming presence of the sea. И когда я переводил эту книгу, я почувствовал присутствие моря, которое было потрясающим, присутствие ветра, пейзажа, to the point that in some stories the sea becomes a character. Ландшафт в некоторых историях море становилось главным персонажем. The sea comes knocking on on the door. Море приходит и стучит в дверь. It happens that the sea was drunk on that day. Или случилось, что море было пьяным в тот день. So the character tells the sea, you know, go back, you're drunk today. И главный герой говорит морю, иди отсюда, иди дальше, пей, раз ты пришел пьяный. So I understand that you can really only build a house in this position if you have a complete obsession with this landscape. И я понял, что такой дом можно построить только если ты поглощен и до сумасшествия поглощен ландшафтами и морем. That's, I think, it was a good preparation for coming to work in for a project in Crimea. И для меня это стало хорошей подготовкой перед моим крымским проектом. So in a way, if we if we look, if we want, if I want to continue this idea that an architect can be an artist and ideas belong to the field of art, it, I thought maybe let's show some images of how Crimea was seen by some historic craftsmen. Продолжая идею того, что архитектором является художником, архитектура искусства. Я изучил искусство, посвященное Крыму, Крымскому морю, пейзажам. So here we see some men struggling a little bit with the waves. И вот здесь на картине изображена лодка. But the boat. Волны. And then the man-made element in the in the profile. И вот уже рукотворный объект. Safety architecture. Маяк это прибрежная. If you were to be a minimalist artist, you probably see it as a cone stuck in the landscape. Obviously, it does a lot more. It's a lighthouse, but. И если, то есть, она добавляет картину к пейзажу. Это маяк. Необходимый элемент, даже если мы работаем в минимализме. So this is what I did as well. We we went on a boat and we started looking at all the coast, the current coast of the southern coast of Crimea, and started looking at all the types of architecture that we could, that I could see there. And I did a few lighthouses. I found them very interesting. И мы сели в лодку, сели на катер, и мы решили обогнуть все побережье Крыма, посмотреть дома. Я видел несколько маяков. Было очень было несколько очень интересных зданий, которые мы увидели на Крымском побережье. Our project is near Balaklava. Наш проект находится неподалеку от Балаклава. Балаклава there were two two his I guess two typologies from history, which is the building by the port 
generally a white building. И вот мы в Балаклаве нашли видели пару зданий, которые построены в стиле того времени. Это белые здания. And the Genoese, the ruins of the Genoese fortress. И мы увидели руины генуэзской крепости. Which obviously the, the defensive architecture, fortification architecture. Это архитектура больше военная, укрепление. They have a lot of symbolic meanings. У которой много символических значений. But they all, they can also be beautiful objects in the landscape. Но она тоже может быть красивой, там могут быть красивые объекты, архитектуры, которые подчеркивают регион. И та крепость, которая в Судаке, мне кажется, она все-таки была восстановлена, поскольку она практически в нетронутом виде. Но стены достаточно мощные. In the Crimean landscape. А, и на Крымских горах мы видим много мощных конструкций. As you know, this, this is a restored version. И вот уже восстановленное здание. And we start to see this pattern of some storage on the storage on the lower floor at the level of the sea. И здесь мы увидели традицию приспособления первого этажа для гаража для so in a way, I, I, in, in a way, it was a bit of a of a synthesis between these typologies that were was the initial thing that I was looking at. То есть это был синтез таких прототипов, на которые я смотрел и создавал что-то новое. But there was a, a functional requirement, which was to house a 13 meter boat. И вот внизу я построил гараж для 13-метровой. Which is quite an architectural problem because you end up having a huge garage door. И это для архитектора это достаточно большая проблема, поскольку нужны огромные огромные величины гаражные ворота. Which can be very overpowering. It can be the main idea of the project. If you let it be the main idea of the project, it can be the, the main idea of the project, but in a way I didn't want it to be the dominant element. And an example of our architecture and art is the new museum of art in New York. Еще одна идея – это музей в Нью-Йорке. By uh, Kazuyo Sejima and Sana. Uh, архитектора Kazuyo Sejima. Very Japanese simplicity that I've always uh, admired, very zen, but also playful. И вот здесь японская простота, которой я всегда восхищался, и здесь она игрива. And then, Again, talking about architecture and art, the Architectons by Malevich. И снова возвращаясь к теме архитектуры как искусства, архитектура, вернее, произведения Малевича. We're all giving hints on how to deal with this problem of a huge garage door, how to make it not overpower you. Тоже дали мне подсказку, каким образом можно обыграть идею огромных огромных гаражных ворот. I think Malevich was an extremely interesting example that has been studied, I think, in by architects for a long time. Malevich is an interesting example that has been many architects in the years. So, in a very basic schematic way, we have the storage of the boat. И вот достаточно схематично. Здесь у нас внизу гараж для яхты. We have one residential holiday flat unit. Вот здесь у нас одна квартира для отпуска. Another one on top. Еще одна сверху. Creating offset, more more playful experience and more different terraces. Которая создает еще дополнительные террасы и достаточно игриво получается. Then we added a unit at the side which has two holiday flat units. 
И вот мы добавили еще один блок. Здесь две квартиры для отдыхающих. And the spare tower. Uh, и башня. With, which in my head was always a bit of a mixture between is it a lighthouse, is it a church bell tower, or is it a fortification? Который, uh, которую я еще вначале не окончательно придумал, то ли это будет uh, башня как башня церкви, то ли это своего рода маяк, uh, то ли это какая-то другая башня с колоколом. And there was also, basically, I think we have, in a, I think in a, in a psychoanalytic term, you define an, the identity, your identity, you can define it, at least Freud defined it, as a graveyard of lost loves. И, uh, говоря языком психоаналитики, эту идею можно охарактеризовать по Фрейду как um, идея потерянной любви, утраченной любви. The ghosts of everything you've ever loved are always with you. And they come back. And so this was my partner's house coming back. Which I was looking at, I think, 10 years before. 10 years before. Now, there is the idea, there is the whole, and there's, there are the parts. So in terms of the parts, as I mentioned, I was looking at these ruins. I was also looking at the windows, the stair windows in this French Chateau Massandra that work with the stairs and a lot of these things came back this is the stair tower this is the entrance on the on the third level you go beyond the tower to a balcony at this level or you go into the stair tower and you go upstairs to this unit or to the roof terrace or to the units below. Now a lot of a lot of little elements jump jump back at you. You don't even I think very often you don't even realize what they're doing. In this case, this window was 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 jumping into the drawings. This condition of the double window. И идея двойного окна came back here. двойного окна она воплотилась вот здесь. We've been, well, we went again to visit Дружба. И снова мы вернулись в санаторий Дружба. And my son said, oh, Daddy, but that I could see something similar to your project here. И мой сын сказал, пап, я смотрю, uh, тут есть сходство с твоим проектом. Well, obviously, it would be a great compliment to hear that. Uh, конечно, это для меня, было, для меня это было большим комплиментом. I think I'm becoming obsessed by this project. Uh, и я думаю, что что-то из этого проекта воплотилось. And it's growing, it's growing inside of me every day. И это растет. And I think it's it is really a masterpiece of world art. In some cases, it might not work perfectly as architecture. In some areas, I think that. 
в некоторых областях. But as a as a work of art, I think it's it's among the, the top that have ever been done. I think. No, как произведение искусства в целом, не архитектура искусства, мне кажется, это достаточно сильный шедевр. So you know these simple ideas: the glass, the window, the looking out to the sea. Maybe a little bit have some reference, perhaps, to that as well. Um, и вот идея. Um, the garage door, I think, does not does not dominate the building, which was my fear. И мне кажется, что гаражные ворота они не слишком много на себя берут в плане здания. Это как раз то, чего я боялся, что будет слишком они выделяться. Most units have outdoor spaces, which are have some privacy. И в большинстве квартир есть пространство, где можно уединиться, большое пространство. And the contrast between the madman and the natural with the mountains behind is a little bit reminiscent to the first image of the, for me, for the lighthouse on, on, in the landscape, the, the, the natural and the man-made. И uh, контраст между природой и uh, трудом человека, вот здесь он для меня виден, как, как вот тот маяк, что мы видели здесь, видны горы и видно здание. Maybe a few more elements. Еще несколько элементов. The ship, the boat window, the round boat window. А, круглые иллюминаторы, окна. My grandmother had one of those in her house in Rome. У моей бабушки в Италии было такое окно. And I was, a, I was extremely fascinated with it. И мне оно очень нравилось. But obviously boats have that identity. И то есть всегда возникали ассоциации с яхтами. The, the, the feeling of the boat was a conscious effort И for it to come into the project. Было чувство, что находишься внутри в яхте, и вот здесь в проекте тоже моя задача была создать ощущение пребывания в яхте, в корабле, в море. We have two types of round windows. У нас два типа круглых окон. This is this is the road. This is one of the entrances. This is the gap in which, in which you either go up the stairs or you go inside this flat or down the stairs. Um, это дорога один из входов, и оттуда можно пойти либо спуститься вниз во двор, либо зайти напрямую в здание. In this case, the, the sheer size of this window has always talked to me about the lookout point or the lighthouse. И вот здесь um, это окно большое, но um, для меня всегда ассоциировалось с маяком. It doesn't do too much apart from a symbolic level and also the experience of rising up through what is completely dark on one side with only small windows on one side and then growing up and suddenly well, walking up and then suddenly having the light at the top. Кроме символики, она ничего не добавляет, но и то, конечно, что внутри в самой башне темно, поскольку окна только с одной стороны, и пока поднимаешься по лестнице, находишься в темноте, и постепенно идешь к свету, к свету, и выходишь на освещенную территорию. Another ghost. Еще один призрак из прошлого. The roof of Casa Malabart and its relationship with the horizon. Крыша Каза Малапа и Каза Малапарте. The writer is called Курцио Малапарте. Писатель, который построил этот дом, его называли, его зовут Курцио Малапарте. И вот крыша этого здания, она сливает, она вровень идет с горизонтом. And that came back in the project in this way. И вот эта идея воплотилась таким образом в моем проекте. Now, if if there was one 
dominant image of the experience of the project. It's a photo by a Japanese photographer. Это фотография японского фотографа, Hiroshi Sugimoto, которого звали Хироши Сугимото. He did a series of photos of, of horizons. Он сделал серию фотографий горизонта, which tell us what, what we already know, but they tell us in a beautiful way. И он передает нам то, что мы уже знаем, но он нам это показывает очень красиво. That every day the horizon is different. Каждый день горизонт, Over the sea. Каждый день линия горизонта отличается, если смотришь на море. So it's a spectacle. Uh, и это бинокль. And in a way that the project was meant to be a machine to experience this spectacle, a theater, a theater for this spectacle. И uh, вот этот проект, он своего рода площадка для, uh, театр для бинокля. That's why the why the windows are nine meters wide. Uh, вот почему uh, окна они девять метров шириной. And the most powerful time is actually in the very early morning when the first light starts to come out. И самое красивое время здесь утром на рассвете, когда солнце только начинает подниматься над горизонтом. You can get seasick also in this space. Вот выйдя на это пространство, можно... Because you feel everything is moving even if it isn't. Можно почувствовать, как будто все движется, и вплоть до головокружения, как будто чувствуешь качку. And these are other flats. The stair, the stair tower rising towards the light. The set, setting back the window from the front of the of the building allows the solar shading of the of the glass. Because the, the, way the, the building is facing south, so the sun, south, sun will be at its highest when it's directly in front. Another idea that is always uh, thought about, I think, by photographers, but also by architects when they, photo when they ask for the photographs of their work, is this condition in a painting by Magritte, the Belgian surrealist? And what is the photograph that is represented? It is a building of Belgian architect. Magritte. Magritte. Uh, the condition of daylight and artificial light at the same time. And here is the idea of natural and artificial light. Architectural photographers always try and achieve this. Well, I think we kind of managed as well. Where the tower, the tower becomes a little bit of a lantern. And there was also a conscious decision of not putting any lights. И мы сознательно не установили источники света вот здесь на версии, чтобы не разрушить связь с горизонтом. Now I've got this this image and one more, so it's almost the end. У меня есть еще эта фотография и следующая, мы уже почти And again, I think it's this what I was talking about, the identity being the graveyard of lost loves, and this is a project by an Irish architect, female architect, done in, again, I think it's probably 1930s, 20s or 30s, in the south of France. And here is another idea. Говоря о, об утраченной любви и возвращении к ней, вот проект 
архитектора женщины. Она этот дом спроектировала на юге Франции. It's a house by the sea. Это домик у моря. And it was a house that I was studying 20 years ago when I was a student. Это домик, который я изучал 20 лет назад, когда еще был студентом. At the London Metropolitan University, which is now partner of the Moscow School of Architecture. Londonski Universitet, the Metropolitan, который сейчас является партнером Московского университета. And actually, I made I made a link that that this maybe problem of the house of the modern house by the sea was with me. For at least 20 years, if not 25, if not more, only when I was preparing this lecture, I made this link. So I think it, I think this project was there in my head, but I wasn't even aware of it.